from a historical standpoint, the the image of the witch was used as like a way to create fear around people that were outside of the norm. When I think of the pictures, especially in artwork, I either think of, you know, sort of the cartoon hags, you know, the green faces, like Wizard of Oz kind of thing, you know. They are hideous creatures, the devils, and... As a child, you think of witches, you think, you know, like warty, warty fingers and faces, you know, like old hags cackling and things. It's a very negative image. There's so much that in cult, like, encapsulates the concept of the witch. It's not just the idea of, you know, women running around a fire, you know, like that sort of typical, you know, image that everyone's sort of fed. has been explored through the medium of fine art for centuries. From the early 1400s, witches began appearing in European illustrations and woodcuts as demonic creatures with deviant sexual habits, removed from morality and remorse for their accusers' supposed sufferings. Throughout the next 400 years, thousands of Europeans were killed for alleged witchcraft. Their crimes ranged from causing male impotence to damaging property and worshipping Satan. Within recent history, occult spirituality was suddenly an area of interest opposed to something to be feared, and women again felt safe to reclaim sorcery for themselves, in both their lives and their art. Throughout this video essay, we'll explore first the historical depictions of which as being something to be feared and shunned, opposed to its contemporary iconography as a metaphor for female empowerment in a world that's coming to terms with its social and gender inequalities. Within his book, The Appearance of Witchcraft, Images and Social Meaning in the 16th Century Europe, Charles Zika charts the development of the witch as a new visual subject, showing how the traditional imagery of magic and sorcery of medieval Europe was transformed into the sensationalist depictions of witches in pamphlets and prints of the 16th century. In the first half of the 15th century, the witch appeared as a newly defined figure on the cultural landscape of Europe. While the belief in power of certain men and women to do harm had been firmly entrenched in European society since ancient times, it was not until the 15th century that preachers, lawyers, judges and physicians began to elaborate a set of beliefs and the practices and potency of people called witches. They rapidly became the object of intense religious, political and judicial scrutiny. Witchcraft in art is, especially with the feminine, is usually based on power and knowledge. Uh, the, the earliest example we could think of is uh, just scripture upon uh, the deity Lilith, um, the, the first wife who refused to lay beneath Adam. Um, she believed herself to be an equal and therefore refused to lay beneath. Um, that was a representation of um, the feminine power being as sin. Um, that's one of the earliest representations. And then going forward, if we remain within Christianity as a context, if we look at um, just Mary Magdalene as a whole and her time with Jesus, um, it was seen that he was sinful for associating with a, a prostitute because most people believe that she was a prostitute. And then in art depictions of her, she's always seen as um, either holding a, a whip um, to kind of reinforce sexual power, uh, often seen with red hair, which is the same as Lilith, often seen with red hair, uh, which represents um, blood, sacrifice, sin, the devil, and sexuality. Uh, so it is kind of um, a drawn out theme throughout history. I have seen some paintings where they're just normal people, like, but then you see other ones where they are hideous, creatures the devils and such and you're just like you're just normal people we're a very we're a visual culture we see something 
uh, without any context and we make our own context for that. Through the crude and inaccurate visual representation of the witch through the medium of art and literature, the concept of the witch was visualised as that of inherently evil, further accelerating the disconnect of society that was beginning to become more and more removed from the spirituality of its own past. I would definitely say that there was this like huge fear around the image of the witch and the idea of the witch, but in reality it's just... I think it's just groups of women who had power and there is a lot of male dominated um, groups that have stripped that back from women and um, whether or not that was influenced through like religion, you know, different cultures clashing and um, a lot of that was stripped away from women and I think that's why there was this built up fear around the idea of the witch and in reality it was just women who were very connected, interlinked, you know. Um, communities, you know. Some of the most powerful images of the diabolical nature of witchcraft produced in the 15th century depicted witches as a group and were shaped by contemporary notions of heresy. Heretics, of course, were more frightening in large numbers as a direct challenge to power and the governing bodies. Christianity in itself has been wrongfully used as a tool and a guise in which to control and govern the mass populace. It is the fear of losing control that still reverberates within contemporary society. I do think it's a very empowering thing as a woman because women in witchcraft and general paganism are seen as powerful and important, which, you know... <laughs> In our, you know, even in a contemporary sense, we're still not seen that at that level fully yet. You know, we're still having to fight for a lot of rights. Maybe not so much in our country, but you know, throughout the world, there's still a lot of um, divide between men and women and our rights. Um, historically, you know, it mostly was women that were persecuted for being witches, and a lot of them. It was nothing to do with witchcraft. It was to do with, you know, with the looked or with the acted or what they did and such. In the olden days, it was more women. And it was women leading groups and leading things. And because of that, a, a lot of groups like that got shunned because a woman shouldn't lead things. And I don't mean to bring it down to sexism, but I do believe there was a part to play the first known artwork depicting witches on broomsticks appears in an illustrated manuscript by French writer Martin Lefranc. They're described as Waldesians derived from French law that saw the group as the challenge to Christianity as a religion and an institution within governing bodies. This concept of Western opposition to anything against the norm was further ingrained in the psyche of society as the years went on, contributing further to the loss of connection to tradition and identity, particularly within the UK. We did lose, like, um, our sense of, like, like, pagan rituals because it is very fluid and it's very much like a personal thing rather than like a set of rules that you have to abide or or a particular person like um god or allah or whatever um or buddha that you look up to it's more about how you feel and how like we're connected to the earth or you know the spirit these women who were considered witches were also considered powerful within their own realms and districts, which is what the um, the lords and ladies did not like at all, especially the, um, with the politics at that time and the rise of Quakerism. Um, Quakerism was, um, especially with Oliver Cromwell, it was based around men um, being in charge mostly. Quakers definitely played a little bit of a role there in putting forward the narrative of woman as sinner they did not like knowledge of any kind. So it's not only do they read, but they also learned herbal medicine and put themselves forward as midwives, helped other women, which then could be seen as um, a cult against the force of the um, political aspects of the time.
During the reign of King James V, somewhere between 70 and 200 so-called witches were put on trial, tortured and even executed from the town of North Berwick and the surrounding area alone. The exact number is not known, and neither is the proportion of those arrested who were actually executed. However, the consensus is that the large majority were horrifically tortured. The reason for this was King James. James V was travelling from Denmark to collect his new bride Anne of Denmark in 1589. During the crossing, the storms were so severe that he was forced to turn back. James became convinced that this was the work of witches from North Berwick, intent on his ruin. There was talk at the time that one of them sailed into the Firth of Forth to summon the storm, proving her guilt as not only a witch, but also would be regicide. This story has become renowned in history as a definitive example of power fearing its loss of control within the story's most famous depiction in Shakespeare's tragedy Macbeth, an allegory of the king and his descent into paranoia and madness as he feels his right to power is in danger. When we view the image of the witch as being a direct link to fear of a man's loss of control, we can begin to understand why the depiction of witches or women holding any form of power has been placed into narratives that remove them from the normal. There's these sort of signs that you're given um, if you're a witch, which people used to believe. One thing that my family have that is an inherent sign of the witch is that a lot of the females on my dad's side have six toes. <laughs> um, not an actual physical sixth toe, but um, six, a second bone in your fifth toe, which is counted as a sixth toe um, for some reason. <laughs> but I think it is just something that's inherited with my family history. When I think of the depictions, especially in artwork, I think of, you know, sort of the cartoon hags. You know, I think that's the kind of things that stick in people's minds still. Um, but even in like, pop culture, you know, despite having, you know, programmes that have kind of glamorised and even sexualised, you know, witchcraft and things, there are still programmes with like, you know, like horror movies with like the you know, evil witch that you know it steals children to eat them and things so it's still very much you know in our minds in that sense despite you know like even as a pagan who has you know learned about witchcraft and has you know experienced it when you say witch i still think that image in my head because it's so ingrained a good example is Roald Dahl the witches when she was revealed as the grand high witch she suddenly developed um, like claw-like fingers and that's not fair that's that's going into the stereotypical there must be something wrong with you and I know this is a a child thing and I know it's just a book but this is not good for people that have disabilities and are normal because then there's these young children going oh that's a witch because she's got something there's something there that's not quite normal but that is normal to that person in Anne Barstow's book, Witch Craze, A New History of the European Witch Hunts, she views this witch's mark in relation to the early witch hunts from a similar feminist perspective. Barstow remarks on the use of a witch's mark as evidence as an excuse to control women's bodies through violence and sadism. The searching of women's bodies for the witch's marks gives an insight into the reality of a woman's position during this time. She notes an example of this in the description of a case. When a personable and good-like woman was defended by one of the local gentry, the pricker argued that, having been accused, she must be tried anyway. 
From this we can see that the sexual and violent nature of hunting for supposed witches' marks is further evidence that these witch hunts were in fact women hunts. Throughout historical context, um, in a social and political aspect, um, throughout um, particularly uh, Britain and the Western world, during witch trials, a lot of the time it was in fact women's bodies uh, that were the enemy in the sense that you would be looking for witch marks. Uh, the problem being that witch marks could be anything from a mole to a birthmark to a scratch. Um, it could be anything such as that which would be classed as a witch mark. In order to discredit someone, you really need to paint their image as something that's easy to fear or easy to mock. This is done through the historical lens, um, when witches were seen as something scary, something to stay away from, something not to be trusted, to moving into more contemporary ideas where witches have almost become a caricature-like figure with the, the green faces, an utter fictionalisation of a person that does actually exist and did actually exist. It's that total fear of loss of control that really drives this image being further presented. It's because the religion of paganism or Wicca or witchcraft is so unlike organised religion and governing bodies that it is feared because there isn't that instinctual one person leading us. It's, it's a personal thing and that can be something which is wholly terrifying when your focus is on keeping control. As we move further into the contemporary image of the witch, we begin to see a definite divide in the positive and negative imagery. On one hand, the terrifying monster history has created is still ever-present, her ugly green complexion and broomstick and toe. But we're also beginning to see the re-emergence and reclaiming of spiritual and ritualistic practice taking a whole new form on social media platforms. Whether this is a positive representation is yet to be seen, with the community divided by how they want to be portrayed within this new landscape. Within the last three years, uh, witchcraft, um, so not particularly Wicca, paganism, druidism, but witchcraft as a whole has increased 20% and that has actually um, been directly linked to the use of Instagram as a social media platform. Uh, people showing um, kind of fact sheets, um, altars, types of rituals, I see a lot of it on TikTok now, uh, where people are diverging from the sense of normal in order to find their own sense of normal. I think it's just a, a much simpler time and we need to connect back to ourselves and that alone is powerful, being whole as a person unto yourself and your own systems. We're feeling um, very restrained by the powers that be, uh, the people that run uh, the government, especially this year. So I believe it's almost a form of wanting a simpler life where everything we do isn't scrutinised and instead of following a set of belief systems and values that have, has been created by someone else, it's something that we can take back and we can follow our own beliefs and our own morals and our own values. A lot of the traditions that we read about in witchcraft and paganism don't happen so much now in this country. Um, things like lighting like Beltane fires and jumping over them. They're maybe still prominent in things like Ireland and that, but over here it's not really done as much now, which is a shame. But that's been happening, you know, in the country for a long, long time now. And there's a, a definitely a big feeling of loss, you know, a loss of, you know, a part of people that they didn't really know they had to begin with because it's not really spoken about as much unless, you know, you're in a history class and, you know, second or third year at school, you look at sort of like the witch burnings and the trials and things, you know, it's a very dark part of history. And that has definitely, you know, stayed in the sort of psyche of, you no know, modern culture. You know, um, when you see the term witch, it's still got a very negative connotation, despite the sort of resurgence in popularity within women now. So it's, it's still there, I think. There's so much that encult, like, encapsulates the concept of the witch. It's not just the idea of, you know, women running around a fire, you know. There is this whole weird caricature of a witch almost, like, 
there isn't that fear anymore. But I feel like they're now sort of mocking in some ways the concept of the witch. And I think it's something that within contemporary art, especially, it's slowly being reclaimed. And even like in modern things right now, like TikTok, you know, it's slowly becoming very integrated back into our cultures. And it's a nice thing to see. It's nice to see that we are building not just women but people back up you know because it's not just limited to women the idea of the witch you know Mm -hmm. um and i think it's a really nice thing to see that we are starting to sort of form these communities again and um i think spirituality just brings so much more into people's lives um that it's a nice aspect to have we want a certain connection to our history and like our culture. We, I think we do see that globalization does, it makes everyone like, it's great that it brings people together, but it also like um, washes away our history. And I think people want to connect to that history again. I really like how um, spirituality and um Wicca they're very much like into being like being thankful to the earth and like you know in the end um like just being grateful for the planet that we have and how we have trees and how we have um like the sea and water and all that sort of stuff. Nowadays in the (laughs) Um, it's become like really cool to become like the witchy kind of person. I'm really into crystals and whatnot. And there's nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that at all. But that's just bridging the surface. It's a it's a double edged sword, really. I like the I have found some of this stuff on TikTok helpful. As a person learning, I will go out as any other person that's bored I'll just happen across TikTok and I'll see something I'm like that is interesting I will go research that bit more and that is helpful I I enjoy that but again as I've said I don't appreciate the half-assed attempts like I'll go research and if it's for me great if it's not for me I'll just keep it to myself but the people broadcasting stuff like it's a newspaper it be, like it feels like a newspaper you can only take what it said with a grain of salt I think it's changed in two ways good and bad um, there is a lot more you know openness for it in comparison to what it would be you know a few hundred years back but with that comes the the aesthetic witches <laughs> which sometimes to explain that a little bit better um, there's a lot of people who are online who will say that they're witches and they believe in witchcraft and things and they practice it but they're only doing it on an aesthetic level they'll dress up like you know like stevie nicks or like um the coven from american horror story and things and will post about it online, but they don't actually believe in witchcraft and its belief system, if that makes sense. So I think there's a, a fine balance of being, you know, more open to it and accepting it, but there's people that are taking it to a whole new level that give it a bad name. Now women can be any shape, any size, any race, you know, anything, but still be empowered by witchcraft and to know that they are, you know, worthy and powerful and that they you know they're not um put down by men or people in society some people do to get a bit too far and it's a bit cringy but i think on the whole it's not a bad thing you know people want to be more um sort of eco-friendly and live off the land and be less like sort of relying on you know technology and what comes with technology you know the sort of the mental health that should come with technology and things who won't escape from it it's not a bad thing i think our society is starting to look at our past to come up with a better future if that makes sense um and i think people are um 
appreciating rituals more, you know, appreciating how rituals can be like allowing you to have a hands-on experience with something, like taking a moment to actually think about what you're doing. And I think that's something that people appreciate a lot about rituals. We've built up where we are today from, you know, the stepping stones of those before us. And I think that the woman I am today is because of what my, like, you know, the mothers before me, you know, that connection before all of us, you know, I think what they've built up is something that should be celebrated. They've woven this structure and I would like to continue weaving that um, structure and being able to build up whether or not it is my own children or whether or not it is other women in other communities. Um, I would really like to continue, you know, paving the way in that. And I feel like I could definitely do that in this sort of contemporary environment that we have just now. To reach some kind of conclusion at the end of this project, I think it's important to recognise that we cannot erase the inaccurate depictions from history. The image of the old hag will continue to remain in society despite its hurtful and deflammatory connotations. What can happen is an acknowledgement of what is fact and what is fiction. In order for the fictionalised image of the witch to remain, there needs to be a distinction between her and the existence of communities who continue to practice a religion that is still misunderstood and often shunned. We cannot erase history, but we can allow folklore and stories to remain folklore and stories. Within our realm, spirits are lurking waiting for their names to be called upon by the ancestors they left, still present upon our vessel of life. Watching, waiting, as the ancestors they left become numb, as the names called become worn, slowly slipping into the blank oblivion, a black abyss. Watching, waiting, forgotten.